<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Sonoran Reef. Uh, sorry that we didn't have a video last week. Um, I thought about just trying to cram something through, uh, but it wouldn't have been what I wanted to share. So uh, I apologize for that, but hopefully this week makes up for it. Um, today we're going to be doing the video that we've been uh, previewing now for some time and that is can a healthy reef tank cure hair algae on its own so um, sit back and get ready uh, we're going to learn together on this one so uh, let's see what we have Okay, so as I was getting ready to put this video together, I realized that I probably need to give you a little bit of background. So here's the background. Um, as you guys know, I did a video a couple of uh, months ago about Vibrant for reef tanks and how uh, while my tank was running fallow, the Vibrant did a really good job of keeping my reef tank um, pretty much algae free while all of my fish were in quarantine. Now, uh, I also was using Vibrant on my son's reef tank. He had a 29-gallon uh, JBJ up in his room, and for some reason, this tank came down with hair algae ten times worse than anything I've ever had to deal with. We tried Vibrant, we were testing, we were doing everything we possibly could, and nothing was touching this hair algae. I mean, we were pulling it out literally two or three cups of hair algae every week, and it just came back more and more aggressive. So as we were looking at possibly doing something to um, combat this, uh, I saw a YouTube video from Mile High Reefers, who suggested, or I guess he purchased or got free some rock um, from a friend, and he put it right into his system, and it had some hair algae on it, and he said in the video he wasn't worried about it, that his tank should be able to handle it, and it did. So that got me thinking. Um, if I took some of my son's rock with hair algae, could my aquarium handle it? and get rid of the hair algae on his rock like it did on my rock. So here's that story. Okay, so this right here is the first piece of rock that we took out of my son's aquarium. It didn't have any corals or anything on it. This was just on the bottom of his uh, aquarium. As you can see, it had quite a bit of hair algae on it. Now. I'm all about conducting crazy experiments, but for step one, I thought, you know what, let's get some of the hair algae off this thing before we actually start. So I pulled it back out of the aquarium here and tried to pull as much hair algae off as I could, and this is what we ended up with. So um, obviously there is still some on it, and I didn't get crazy. I did want to see what was going to happen when I put this in the aquarium, and um, so I wanted there to be some hair algae on it. I wanted to see what this piece of rock would do in my aquarium. Would it go crazy and start growing hair algae and spread all over the tank? I certainly didn't hope so. But, you know, as you look at my aquarium, you don't see algae anywhere except in the power heads. So, you know, you can't really see it from this view. But from here you can see that there is hair algae in my MP40. The catch is that you never really, um, it never really goes into the aquarium. And the only reason it's there is because the fish can't get to it. That's the first hint. So the next morning I didn't see a huge change. Um, but here's what the rock looked like in the aquarium. Kind of give you a couple different angles of this thing here so didn't notice anything right away 
Um, I did notice that the fish were swimming by it and crabs were crawling on it, but certainly not attacking it with a vigor. They were just kind of checking it out. Now here's the rock a week later. Same rock. Um, and it is basically algae free. Let me adjust the lights here a little bit so that you can kind of get a better look at this thing. But basically every speck of hair algae is off of this rock within a week. I mean, I can't find a trace. So with that being said, it was time to conduct the second phase of this experiment. We're going to put a rock of his with a coral on it. So I removed the rocks from this portion of my aquarium and um, I stir the sand bed every week as part of my weekly maintenance. I don't go crazy, but um, I do stir up the sand bed a little bit, try to get that detritus out. So in a minute here, you're going to see me put my scraper into the sand bed and I'm going to just stir up the detritus and make a flat level spot for the, uh, the new coral. And there are a couple reasons why I'm going to do this. Um, one, I want to make a nice flat spot for the next piece of rock. Two, I want to make sure um, that I don't trap any of my uh, critters under this new piece of rock. So I'm just going in, just moving the sand around. I'm not getting all the way into the bottom. Like I said, I'm just moving the sand bed a little bit to get ready for the next piece of rock I'm about to put in this aquarium. So, as I said, this is one of the steps that I do anyway. So, um, I just stir up the sand bed, let the filter naturally grab all of those particles as they go. Um, nothing all of that crazy. I'm not really trying to scrape anything off the glass at this point. I'm just pulling some of the sand away. Um, watch out, little guy. All right, so there we go. I have the sand bed pretty much ready to go and uh, getting ready to put that first rock in the aquarium. Okay, let me just say a couple of things really quick. I know that it's incredibly stupid, the experiment that I'm conducting. Let me just get a couple of things out of the way. One, you should never put anything from someone else's aquarium into your aquarium without quarantining it for at least 30 days. The only reason I'm doing this is because everything in my son's aquarium, for the most part, came from my aquarium. And we haven't added anything to either aquarium that hasn't been quarantined for 30 days in a very long time. So even though there was a risk, it was a risk I was willing to take for this experiment. So, um, just keep that in mind. If you're going to try this experiment on your own, uh, really think through it. So here we are. We're putting the next rock into this aquarium. You can see the hair algae already flying all over the place. This is what it looked like in his tank. I haven't removed any hair algae or anything on it yet. But this one, as you can see, has some zoas on it. So a little bit different than our first experiment. Um, what will happen with the corals on the rock is kind of what we're doing. This is kind of phase two. Here I pulled the rock out again. That Just a couple minutes after I shot that video. And pulled as much hair algae off as I could. Well, maybe not as I could, but as I wanted to. Again, this is an experiment on can the reef cure the hair algae. I just didn't want to challenge it and overwhelm it quite yet. This is just, you know, step two. Well, here's the rock a week later. As you can see, the hair algae certainly doesn't look the same. It kind of looks unhealthy. It's some nubs coming out of the zoanthids. And um, the zoanthids look a lot better too, but it's not cured. Okay, 
Now this video is taken with that same rock. It's in a new tank now. Um, there is a uh, yellow tang. This is my quarantine tank. This is another part of the experiment. Um, before we put it back in his tank, we want to see if the hair algae comes back. That first rock we did, we put it back in his aquarium and within a week it was covered again. Anyway, here's the second, no, the third rock that we're going to do. This one has an SPS on it, so a little Monty. And as you can see, there is hair algae on this. I've already pulled off uh, quite a bit of algae off of this rock. Here's the rock the next morning. It looks... A little bit better but nothing crazy you can st still see that hair algae on the back side of it there so um, a little bit encouraging notice the uh, tangs and angels swimming around it which is kind of what we're leaning to in this experiment um, at the time this video was taken we really hadn't come to any conclusions yet but we were starting to lean to livestock is the probable answer on why this was working now here's that rock today this is, was actually taken this morning it's in a different spot of the same tank but as you can see the hair algae is completely gone it's out of every corner and crevice now i'm sure there's little pieces still hanging on for dear life but we were ready for the big experiment so this is the rest of the live rock from his tank and we put it in two different spots on my tank. There was so much of it. So, again, we pulled off as much as we could. But if the tank can get through this, then it's definitive in our opinion. And we'll know this within a week or two. If this hair algae all goes away, then we've got our answer. And here's the other rock. This one has a little frog spot on it. But we'll have our answer. If all of this hair algae goes away within the next couple weeks, we're going to know uh, unequivocally that a healthy reef tank can cure hair algae on its own. But um, I'm thinking that the reason why is the livestock selection. Now that said, we have a yellow tang here in my quarantine tank with some rocks with hair algae. And uh, he's already been nibbling at that hair algae, and you'll see that in a minute. But my son's tank has a uh, uh, starry blenny, which is kind of like a lawnmower blenny. It's got an angelfish. Uh, it's got emerald crabs. But for whatever reason, whatever was causing the hair algae to go so crazy, uh, the fish just weren't able to keep up. So we're... That first rock we put in was covered in hair algae within a week again. So this is an experiment. There he is, kind of nibbling at the hair algae on the rock. Uh, this experiment is just to see if we can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And when we put everything back, can we keep the algae off? Now, we won't know that for sure until we actually do it. But uh, we're going to see if this little yellow tang can do the job. Now, when he gets bigger, we'll have to move him or rehome him. But for now, we think he's going to do the trick. So that's a good thing. Big baby. New big baby. Oh, hey. So I hope you learned something. Um, this is only part one, as I mentioned, of this video um, on if a reef tank can cure hair algae if a reef tank can cure hair algae on its own um, the next step of this video its natural progression was um, can the cure last uh, once you put it back into the system it was originally in and what steps you have to take so uh, thanks for watching We'll see you next time.